in the week that Donald Trump became president and in the week that Christian Horner and Jerry Halliwell had a baby we bring you Formula One News Sorry this video is so close up, I'm kind of restricted on space at the moment so um, I'm moving things around, I'll be working from home by the end of next week so um, it's going to be a strange time for me but um, it will also be a very good time for me I guess. Yeah so let's get started. So the first point of news is that my website, theparitycheck.co.uk website is back up. I'm hoping everything's going to be kicked into gear and I'll be posting articles from around the world of Formula One, tech and also um, movies. And I'll be adding a couple others on later on in the year. And if you want to post your own articles, uh, just uh, drop me an email the email address is below so if you want to support me you can click on any of the links in the description or join my patreon or you can use my Amazon link so whenever you do your shopping on Amazon if you use my link you don't get charged any extra um, all that happens is I get a couple of pence kickback uh, per order and um, that really helps me trying to get this um, page set up without you having to put any of your own money uh, directly to me. Let's do the news. Let's do the news. Let's do the news. So Formula One has avoided paying tax in the US and it's been uh, deemed totally legal and uh, I shared this on the Parity Check website. So if you want to have a look, just uh, go to the web address just here. So what's basically happening is they've structured the um, tax and company, I don't know how, what they're called, um, their company um, classifications in a certain way where um, and getting the money back into the US is not going to cause any more um, taxes. So whatever tax they pay in the other countries that they operate in, um, when it does come back to the US, it's completely, um, well, it's not completely tax free, but they won't be paying extortionate fees on it. It's a good thing, I guess, for uh, Liberty Media. Okay, so the next bit of news, um, Felipe Massa was given uh, his Williams car um, for his retirement. But now that he's coming back, he's adamant that he wants to keep it and he's not giving it back. So we'll see how that pans out for the rest of the um, year. So one of the other interesting things to come out of this week is that um, Liberty Media have said that Ferrari might not be getting their uh, usual uh, monetized uh, privileges um, that they normally get. Now, out of all the companies in the paddock, the share of the um, money that's made is um, shared with Ferrari as the largest amount. And then all the other teams get their little bits and pieces afterwards. So um, because Ferrari has been around forever and they are synonymous with um, Formula One. So they just get $90 million just for being in Formula One. That's just crazy. You know, that could support Mana and like Force India and the other struggling teams like Sauber. Um, so I guess uh, Liberty Media are going to make it a slightly more level playing field but even with all that money what does Ferrari do with it? They're, the car's not very good at the moment I bet everyone now wants uh, Bernie Exton back in charge and nobody else So last time I reported that Silverstone might be losing the British Grand Prix So on the 20th of January uh, they basically said no it's not going to happen so they are denying that Silverstone will be dropped as the British Grand Prix uh, after 2019 um, they need to pull something out of the bag it shouldn't be this expensive to um, 
you know, to run a Formula One race. So Nico Hulkenberg has uh, just had his first taster of the uh, 2017 Renault and um, he seems to be quite optimistic. Uh, let's hope uh, he starts uh, fighting for podiums and uh, he does a lot better in this car. So uh, Lewis Hamilton also welcomed his teammate Valtteri Bottas uh, to Mercedes and it seemed like it was quite genuine and um, he th he knows I think that he's going to get a run for his money this year uh, he has a completely different mindset um, from Rosberg so chances are there'll be a lot of getting used to they might even collide in the first couple of races so for my last bit of news, um, the Red Bull um, drivers program, sorry, the junior drivers program has um, selected 15 year old Neil Verhagen to um, join their driver program. And being 15 years old, that's, I think that's quite young. It's not bad for Red Bull. Uh, obviously, he won't be um, competing in Formula One for maybe at least three or four years, maybe five years. <laughs> Helmut Marco spotted him uh, and signed him up. So, yeah, not bad for uh, a guy with one eye. That was the news. So, I think it would be good from now on to actually have a topic um, for these videos um, but again if I'm wrong just tell me in the comments below and I won't bother hopefully these uh, news videos are useful for you and um, I hope to be making a lot more now I'll be integrating them when the season starts with the actual main predictions videos so if there's anything you want me to cover out of the predictions let me know in the comments below email me at social at paritycheck.co.uk okay now it's time for the formula one glossary no the formula one terms i still haven't got a good name for it so Let's just do this section now. Okay, so the first one is downforce. So downforce is an aerodynamic uh, term for the force of gravity that pushes down on a vehicle uh, in Formula One and it allows the vehicle to have better grip and traction on the road. So the faster the car goes, the elements that are on the car like the wing uh, and the rear wing sorry the front wing and the rear wing um, all create downforce and that's why the actual wings are um, usually on the front like slightly different angles and um, this is why halfway through the race you'll see the rear wing or the front wing tweaked a little um, to give it a different angle and that will help the car stick to the ground further so it's the actual force that pushes down onto the car and the next one is drag we're doing all the d's today for some reason so drag is another force which um, hits usually the front of a car and affects how it travels so when a car is speeding really fast depending on how much clearance it has slows the car down now you can slow the car down in many different ways obviously the brakes and what have you um, but it's the elements or the wind that hits the um, car that can slow it down so the powertrain needs to be powerful enough to cut through that now you can't always cut through that but you need to have a good uh, balance of drag to um, speed ratio so that's drag for you I hope I explained that one okay 
So the next item is ECU ECU So the ECU is the brains of the car um, You have an ECU in your car Now uh, when I had my Fiat Punto um, I had um, my ECU malfunction and the um, mechanic didn't know what to do um, he started changing all other things it ended up costing me like over 700 quid just to fix um, one tiny little thing that would have just cost um, like 200 quid to fix um, anyway that annoyance aside um, what the ECU is it's the brains it tells parts of the electronics okay do this do that do this do that it's basically the computer processor and a lot of the ECUs uh, are made by McLaren which is something we found out on um, I think it was either Sky F1 or BBC F1's coverage so the next item is grip so when you hear Martin Brundle or whoever commentator talk about grip and the car's not gripping well or it's a bit slippery um, that's all to do with the actual grip of the car and that is part of the suspension and the tire the tighter or the harder the tire the better the grip usually and the softer the tire the less better the grip but the more grip you have uh, the slower you will actually go in effect so uh, a tire with less grip will allow you to travel at slightly faster speeds than um, a harder tire so that's what they mean about grip so it the car actually grips onto the road and it like think of it as you climbing a wall so you need to have a good grip on the wall to actually progress any further so if you have a light grip on the wall you well actually that's not a really good that's not a really good example but you see what I mean don't you <laughs> sorry about that so um, that was a really bad example but um, you kind of get what I mean so the hard the harder the grip you have on the road the better it is to stick on the road and to go through all the corners um, if your car sticks to the ground as it's going through the corners you'll get a better traction and it will allow you to um, not travel too far out so you, your car won't swing too far back unless you really floor it and uh, just put too much pressure onto the front tires and you do see that happening from time to time from drivers when they're actually pushing very hard so the next item is hands device so hands stands for head and neck support device I think yeah that's right <laughs> And uh, what that does, I don't know if you've seen it, it attaches to the helmet and rests on the shoulder. That device was invented not that long ago really, maybe within the last seven, eight years. Um, allowed them to have really bad and like neck injuries um, when they have a crash. So it's been working pretty well. So uh, thank you for watching this episode and uh, I will see you next time. Please like and subscribe to my videos. Goodbye for now.